excited to welcome you to this evening's concert brought to you by the Idaho State Civic Symphony. I'm Jordan Herget, President and CEO of Portniff Medical Center. As an advocate for the arts in our communities, Portniff is proud to once again be the season sponsor of the symphony. Together we advocate and look to a future filled with music and the arts. Enjoy the concert. Good evening and welcome to tonight's virtual concert by the Idaho State Civic Symphony. During this time of Thanksgiving, tonight's concert promises to once again connect our Bengal community through the power of music, and it reminds each of us that we have so much to be thankful for. Thank you for joining us tonight. Enjoy tonight's performance, and let's all join in this time of Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Welcome to tonight's virtual concert with the Idaho State Civic Symphony. I'm Julie Sorensen, the Artistic Director and Conductor for the ISCS, and I invite you to sit back and enjoy tonight's performance. Tonight, we are excited to bring you symphony favorites from our past concerts that will feature our full orchestra and our wonderful guest artist, Natalia Lauk on piano. Our previous concerts explored the music of the Baroque and classical eras, and tonight, we continue our look into the metamorphosis of music as it developed through the Romantic era. From 1820 to around the turn of the century, Romantic era composers expanded on classical era forms to create unique and personalized compositions. It was a time that rebelled against the reason and logic of the classical era. Highly expressive and programmatic works fill this time along with compositions that explore dark and even supernatural topics. Our first piece tonight does exactly this. The Flying Dutchman Overture by Richard Wagner was originally performed in 1843 in Dresden, Germany, and was his first major success as a composer. The Flying Dutchman Overture summarizes the full supernatural opera that tells the story of an accursed sailor who must find undying love to break the spell, but may only come ashore to search for that true love every seven years. So join us on the stormy seas and enjoy the supernatural journey of Wagner's The Flying Dutchman Overture.
Our final piece of the evening is a Romantic era favorite, beautifully performed by our guest artist, Natalia Lauk. Originally performed in 1901 by a Philharmonic Society of Moscow, Sergei Rachmaninoff's Concerto No. 2 for Piano and Orchestra has grown into one of his most popular works. This three-movement work is characterized by its rich emotional beauty, as well as by its great technical brilliance and difficulty. Natalia originally performed this work with the Idaho State Civic Symphony in February of 2018. I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Natalia about that experience and reminisce together on what was an incredibly moving and memorable night. Please enjoy Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto No. 2 for Piano and Orchestra, Opus 18. Good evening. I am joined tonight with Natalia Lauk, who was our guest artist for the Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto No. 2 for Piano and Orchestra, Opus 18, which she performed with the Idaho State Civic Symphony in February of 2018. Uh, we have a wonderful opportunity to talk tonight and to kind of reminisce a little bit about what it took to put that concert together. It was a very memorable evening. Thank you so much for joining me tonight and for coming back a couple of years later to uh, talk about that night. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Natalia, you are and living here in Pocatello. You are an absolute Pocatello gem that we have. Well, can you tell us a little bit about where you were originally from? So uh, originally I'm from Siberia, Russia. Uh, and if you point in the map of Russia, you probably end up in my hometown, Krasnoyarsk. That's where I'm coming from. That's fantastic. And so what brought you to Pocatello? Oh, well, that's a romantic story. I actually I met my romantic. husband online on a social network calling classmates. And he's a refugee, in fact, because oh. when the Soviet Union fell apart, uh, the U.S. administration was, the, they were accepting refugees. So, um, uh, so Azerbaijan is where Armenians live, the, so they clashed with the Turkeys, and that's how the war and Armenian genocide basically happened. So they had to flee the country because they are Armenians, Christians, basically, and that, that's how they end up here, and that's how I ended up here because like 20 years later after they came here, uh, Sergei brought me here as well. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So you also get to live here with the love of your life and that's yes. fantastic. Yeah. And you have a beautiful daughter as well. Is she still here in Pocatello? Yes, she is. She actually graduated last spring from ISU with minor in uh, computer science and majoring in art. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I know she is just as brilliantly talented as, as you. And it's uh, wonderful that we get to claim you as our own here. <laughs> yeah, I'm now I'm like Pocatellan. I'm Pocatello, <laughs> Idaho, <and> that's it. <laughs> you absolutely are, and we're very glad of it. Um, so why piano for you? Why are you a pianist for you? That's a good question because uh, I basically had no choice because both of my parents, they are pianists. My, uh, they taught piano for more than 50 years, actually. Uh, back in uh, Krasnoyarsk in Russia, and uh, both my my brother and I, they, we studied piano from very early age. Uh, and my parents, they actually continue to teach piano now in, in Germany, Berlin. So it's it's a family trade. Oh. I, I couldn't avoid it. You couldn't have avoided it. <laughs> yeah. It's in your DNA. <laughs> yes, exactly. You had to be playing. <laughs> and probably along with that, some of the great Russian composers, none of the least, Rachmaninoff, which brings us to the concert that we had a wonderful opportunity to work together with. Um, what does Rachmaninoff's concerto mean to you? Well, uh, first of all, it's ultimately Russian. And uh, in my opinion, it's ultimately heroic music and ultimately uh, spirit lifting. So uh, whenever you're down, just listen to Rachmaninoff second. It's going to lift you up. That's it. It does. It's incredibly emotional though. You know, one of the things that I remember most about that time uh, was it was the end of my interim year, right? We were going through all sorts of different transitions and, and things. Uh, and you and I had a wonderful opportunity to really sit down 
and kind of carve out our different thoughts about this piece because there is a lot to this piece. This is him coming back off of kind of a failure of his first symphony. This is his first delving back into music again for himself. And you almost feel like you're going on that journey with him. Um, but one of my favorite parts of working on this, I recall so clearly, was sitting with you in Gorenson Hall down in the Fine Arts Building. And we were talking about just the tempos of different parts within the, within the second movement especially. And uh, that was, that's a very joyful memory for me because I, I'm not sure that everybody understands that the relationship between a guest artist and a conductor is meant to be collaborative. And, and um, not all guest artists are as collaborative as you were willing to be, um, but I enjoyed that so much. Do you have a favorite memory of that time? Well, I, uh, I have a very uh, warm memory about those uh, moments when we get actually the same moments, just <laughs> get to sit with them. Because um, when you're a guest artist, well, sometimes you can get just like a few minutes before you walk in on stage with a conductor going just not too fast, that's it. <laughs> and <laughs> I appreciate so much uh, Maestro, uh, Dr. Sorensen, being able to come to uh, multiple rehearsals, in fact, and being willing to go through the score and uh, uh, kind of trying to gel it all together and make it work because it, in fact uh, with the orchestra we didn't get that much time because there's amount of literature that orchestra is working on they don't get to rehearse Rachmaninoff much so it's right. all depend on the conductor how well she leads the orchestra through the through the performance so it, I'm incredibly thankful for that. Oh, it was, it was a blast. I had a great time with you. It was so fun, so memorable for me. And do you have a favorite movement of the piece? Oh, it's very hard to think. It's, it's, such a, it's such a brilliant piece. But, um, well, if I had, let's, let's say, if I had to pick like one movement I have to play for the rest of my life, that probably would be the second one probably the second one. I mean, there was for a reason the American pop composer <laughs> stole in this melody and put it into all by myself. So yes, there's a reason right. for that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and it's, it's always good to just rip off dead composers. That's the easiest way to get, you know, yeah. good music now. Right? I believe he's still paying <laughs> royal, royalties. So <laughs> He must be paying royalties because that, that is a very well-known tune and melody. And I, I agree, I love the second movement, but there's something about the power of the third oh. that is just, it, the ending especially, there's just no way, I mean, everybody has to concentrate, everybody has mm -hmm. to be right on top of it in order to be able to bring the power uh, to life at the very end. And um, yeah, the whole piece is remarkable. Would you mind playing just a little bit of that very memorable um, part in the second movement so that we can hear that? And uh, thank you again so much for being willing to come and talk with me tonight and reminisce about a really fantastic evening. Thank you for letting me having those. Those are my favorite memories, actually. That's well, like peak of my playing probably in performing on the stage with you. And I actually get to remember one funny moment on that performance because we were so involved in this music so we were behind the stage and the uh, raffle was going on on the stage and raffle passed and everyone <laughs> lost us because we wouldn't come out i'm not come out just for like like 30 minutes or <laughs> until like where they are where are they yes the dr hasenfeld has to go backstage and like <laughs> because nobody told us to come out exactly that's exactly. right <laughs> and we were just sitting there waiting mm -hmm. And Very people patiently. would come up with all those theories, like my dress malfunction, your dress malfunction, or something else. That's right, yeah. a whole bunch of but different But we were theories. just studying the score. Too, we were just theory. very yeah. intent and waiting for somebody to tell us it was okay to go out. <laughs> I remember that too. Yeah. Oh, that's really funny. One thing I do, well, I'll share one memory too, and what is interesting for you to look at when you go look at the video that we'll show the very first opening chords, those hypnotic chords at the beginning in the first movement. I love that for just a few seconds, you'll watch the orchestra members all close their eyes and, and kind of bow their heads a little bit as they take in that sound. 
And to watch that is just, uh, it's, it really does bring to you and bring to life and imagery the depth of the soul of what we are about to undertake together as an orchestra and as a group. So uh, you should look for that when yeah. you look at this, the video Because again. this opening is just incredible. You hear those giant bells going, mm -hmm. boom, tum, yeah. boom, tum. And you cannot help but your heart start racing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess Rahmanin wrote this opening with uh, those passaggios in the, in the piano, like, to hide the nerves behind the orchestra solo, da, 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 and you get to, to like calm down a little bit. That's right. Because it's just so, it's so, I don't know, just high energy. It is, it's high energy all the way through. And so thank you again for performing with us. I do hope that we'll get to do it again. And let's go listen to a little bit of the second movement, shall okay. we? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
Thank you for joining us for this evening's performance. I'm Julie Sorensen, and on behalf of the Idaho State Civic Symphony, we look forward to seeing you at our next concert. Thank you.